In a recent video, which is linked in the description, we analyzed the historical results of closing short strangles for profits or losses, but not the combination of the two. In this video, we're going to build on that research by examining the historical profit and loss results of managing short strangles with profit targets and stop losses together. So let's just dive straight into the study methodology that we used. So first and foremost, we're going to look at options on the S&P 500 ETF, which is the ticker symbol SPY. Now we're going to look at the standard monthly expiration cycles closest to 60 days to expiration for all of our short strangle trades. Now to create our short strangles, we're going to sell the 16 delta call options and the 16 delta put options, which creates a one standard deviation strangle, which just means that the strangle has a 68% probability of expiring out of the money or worthless. Now in terms of managing the trades, we're going to look at four different management combinations separately. So we're going to look at a 25 and 50% profit target combined with a 50% stop loss. And then we're also going to look at a 25% and 50% profit target combined with a 100% stop loss. So we're going to compare all four of these management combinations historically. So just to clarify these profit and loss management combinations, let's go through an example and let's say we sell a strangle for $2. Now, if we're using a 25% profit or 50% loss combination, that means we're gonna close the strangle when the price decreases by 25% to $1.50, or when the strangle's price increases by 50% to $3. So we're either closing the trade for a 25% profit or a 50% loss relative to the premium received. Now, if we were using a 50% profit target or 100% stop loss, we would close the strangle when the price decreased by 50% to $1 or increased by 100% to $4. So relative to that $2 premium received, we're going to close the strangle when the price decreases by 50% to $1 or increases by 100% to $4. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and look at the results of all of these management combinations historically. So in this graph, we're looking at the cumulative P&L of all four management combinations for the short strangles on the S&P 500 ETF. And as we can see here, all approaches performed well over time, though the higher stop loss combinations had more consistent growth over the entire period. Now, when looking at all four of these curves, the one that jumps out to me the most would be the one that is the most consistent over the entire period, which would be the 25% profit target combined with the 100% stop loss. Now, even though the tighter 50% stop loss combinations still performed pretty well over the entire period, there were some long periods for both of those strategies that were very choppy and inconsistent. And that's because when you use a very tight stop loss, there's a higher chance that you're stopped out of more trades in a row and you just don't give the, the trade enough room to move in my opinion. Now, in terms of success rates, all four approaches had very high success rates although the strategy with the greatest success rate was, of course, the one with the 25% profit target and the 100% stop loss limit. Now that makes sense to me because using the wider 100% stop loss means that stop loss was not interfering as much with the strategy as the tighter 50% stop loss did. And additionally, the 25% profit target is the smaller of the two profit targets, which also helps boost that success rate because there's a greater probability of getting to a 25% profit relative to a 50% profit. Now, all four management approaches had the exact same worst P&L, and that's because all of these trades were entered on the same day and experienced the same loss, which was in February of 2018. So this table reiterates the importance of understanding the risk when selling strangles, and even when you're using stop losses, just because you have a set stop loss, it does not mean that you will actually be able to close the trade at that given stop loss point, especially during a day in you know, early February 2018 when the market was down 5% in a single day. It's going to be very hard to close your positions because the bid-ask spreads will widen out significantly, which can make getting filled on your trades close to impossible, at least at a favorable price. So just always keep in mind that even when you're using stop losses for undefined risk trades, such as you know short strangles, short straddles, or even short calls or puts, just keep in mind that losses can get out of hand very quickly and you will not always be able to exit your trades at the given stop loss points that you select before entering that trade. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at the performance of all of these strategies relative to holding to expiration, which just means you're not managing the trades at all. When we compare the 100% stop loss combinations to holding to expiration, which is not managing the trades at all, 
We can see that the management combinations had much smoother growth curves over the entire period, and on average, they suffered much smaller drawdowns, with the exception of that February 2018 market crash. So by taking profits and losses, the historical performance of selling strangles on the S&P 500 has been more consistent and less volatile than not managing the short strangle positions whatsoever. Now historically, it appears that the quicker 25% profit targets on short strangles have performed better in lower implied volatility environments, such as the one between 2013 and early 2018. Now that makes sense to me because in a low implied volatility environment, the market is typically drifting higher, which is exactly why implied volatility or option prices are cheaper. Now, that can cause problems for the short strangle because when you sell strangles in a low IV environment, your short call strike is going to be very close to the stock price relative to selling strangles in a higher implied volatility environment. So now we're looking at the short strangle strategies compared to the CBOE's VIX index. Now the VIX index, put simply, just quantifies the amount of extrinsic value in one month S&P 500 options. So the first zone I want to look at is the 2009 to 2012 area, in which case the VIX index was decreasing over that period for the most part. So a decrease in the VIX index means that the extrinsic value of one month S&P 500 options is decreasing. Now when you're selling strangles, obviously it's beneficial when you see a decrease in the extrinsic value of those options because that generates profits for you as a short strangle trader. Now if we look at 2013, we can see that both of the profit combinations, but more specifically the 25% profit target combination, had the best performance in 2013, which was a year with extremely low implied volatility and a year where the market was just continuously grinding higher. Now as I mentioned earlier, when you're selling strangles in a low implied volatility environment, your strike prices, especially your short call strike price, are going to be very close to the current stock price which means when you hold their trade for a longer duration, there's a higher probability that the market just runs through that short call strike price, which creates losses for you. Now that's why the no management or the higher profit target management combinations did not do so well in 2013. Now if we look at the period between 2015 and early 2018, right before that big market crash, we can see the 25% profit and 100% loss combination had the most explosive growth over that period and that was also an extremely low implied volatility environment in which the market was rallying higher almost every single day. So one of the biggest takeaways from this graph for me is that in low implied volatility environments, when you're selling options in the form of short strangles or short straddles, it has historically been beneficial to take profits sooner rather than later because in a low implied volatility environment, since the market is typically grinding higher on a daily basis, holding those trades for longer periods of time opens you up to losses on the upside just from that continued market appreciation. So by taking profits sooner when you're selling options in extremely low implied volatility environments, you're resetting your strike prices more often, which means your directional exposure is more neutral on average. Now I know that can be a little confusing, so if you need any clarification on that, please drop a comment down below this video and I will give you some examples to demonstrate what I mean. Now, though the short strangle strategies have seemingly been great over the past decade, the huge losses experienced on occasion should not be overlooked. Now, I'm saying that because I know it's easy to look at the cumulative PL charts that we've looked at in this presentation and think that a short strangle strategy would be suitable for most options traders. And that is something that I would disagree with. Now, I'll give you a reason why. So, if the trades are sized to the stop loss, which means the account loses a certain percentage if the trade is closed at the stop loss, then disastrous losses can occur if the strangle cannot be closed exactly at that stop loss limit. So for example, if a trader was sizing a short strangle to a 5% portfolio loss when exiting the short strangle for a 100% loss in the premium received, the trader would realize a 20% total account drawdown if the market collapsed overnight and the strangle was closed at a 400% loss. Now that's a scenario that actually played out in February of 2018. Now for these reasons mentioned, short strangles should be avoided by anyone who does not have an extremely high tolerance for risk or cannot watch the markets all day long. So when you're selling strangles, it's absolutely crucial that you have the ability to close the position if you need to in a moment's notice because markets can move very quickly and you don't want to be in a scenario where you're short a strangle and you can't close it.
Now, I didn't want to end this video on a negative or scary note, but it's my job to just put everything out there and present things as neutrally as possible and let you guys decide for yourselves whether or not you want to trade strangles or if you want to go towards something that's a little bit more conservative, such as an iron butterfly or an iron condor. Now, if you're interested in getting much more in-depth research and seeing full trading plans and trade sizing techniques for index premium selling strategies, go ahead and click on the link in the description and check out the index premium seller course to see if it's something you might be interested in. Well, that's going to do it for this video, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel so you get all of our videos in the future. And be sure to check out some more of our options trading videos, which are listed right here. Once again, I'm Chris from ProjectOption.com, and thank you for watching.